All right, so the goal for today is to cover the problem set on finance, both in Mathematica and in R, and then to move on to some additional issues in finance, and maybe we'll get to, I would actually like to get to option pricing today. All right, so the first question is pretty basic. It's you get $3 today, how much money do you have two years from now if you invested 4% compounded annually? And here what we're going to do is we can simply use a very quick form of the time value command. Yes, we could wrap this in a cash flow and say that you get $3 at time zero. Our interest rate is 4%. We don't have to fiddle with that and we're looking at a future value, so we'll put two. And when we evaluate this, and I'm going to actually clean up my kernel because I've been doing all sorts of interesting stuff this morning. If you recall the issue that I had on Monday, uh huh. Once I cleaned out my kernel, it fixed it. So. Oh, okay. Good. And why does the double brackets around the zero comma three make it say that that's a time and not? Because otherwise, it is. Con that is, if you do this. Yeah, I did that for the second one. Okay. What it's going to do is what is it interpreting it's that as? Is that time zero? You're getting zero, and at time one, you're getting three dollars. Okay, and just out of curiosity, if we were to evaluate this separately, no, it doesn't know what that means. All right, so this is one of these things where you just have to be aware of the conventions and the syntax, and the syntax is you have a list of time value pairs. Okay. Um, although your hint would have been very helpful there, that it yeah. should be between 3.2, and then you would have known that you were doing something wrong. All right, uh, the value of five years of a payment of $4 two years from now with interest of 3% compounded twice per year. Okay, so the first thing we might want to do is to get our interest rate right. Um, and what we need to do is to use the effective interest command. We're going to put in the nominal interest rate here and the period in which it compounds here. So. Uh, this does it a little bit differently than R, which would want you to put a 2 here rather than a 1 half, and it's just a matter of remembering what convention to use. So that interest at 3% compounded twice a year is really the same as 3.02, etc. percent. Okay? And so we're just going to create a cash flow object that reflects a payment of $4 two years from now, and we're going to be looking at the value in five years, and so when we evaluate that, we get our friend 4.37, etc. cetera. Okay. All right, so now what I want to do is to ask you to um, evaluate a t uh, cash flow, but with non-constant interest rates. And so putting in the cash flow should be old hat for you now. Um, the only complication is how to deal with these more complicated interest rate structures. And the way Mathematica wants you to do it is that you put in a year for a rate for each year. And to have it compounded continuously, you're going to put a zero there in that that's the way it represents it. And I want to know what's the value today. We're going to compare today's to today's. So we'll put a zero as our final argument, and we get 109,000 and some dollars. Um, and so we would rather get a this is all true, 50,000 a year from now and 80,000 five years from now, assuming they're actually going to pay. Um, all right, so we might want to know at what interest rate are these two cash flows equivalent? And so there are several ways of doing this. One is to use a solve command. Uh, one is to use find root, which is a numerical process. Um, and in this instance, they both give the same answer. Um, let's look at the solve one. We're going to say for what value of R, assuming R is a real number because Mathematica will go through, you know, it doesn't understand that this is a finance problem and so it may find imaginary or complex interest rates. Um, that's how we do it. Otherwise, if we want to use find root, all we have to do is give it a guess and I guessed 4%. So either way you do it. Uh, if you can earn 7.93% on your money, then these two flows are identical. Okay? All right, off to Joe and his issues. All right, so 
um, this is a retirement planning problem, basically, and we're trying to figure out largely how much money he's going to need to retire and how he's going to get there. Um, it's simplified a lot because we're ignoring tax issues and a variety of other issues, but in any event, um, what I can do is to make a cash flow for Joe. I could also make an annuity, but let's just create a cash flow using the table command. And um, we've now created a cash flow for Joe where he's getting 5,000 at time zero and putting in 5,000 at time one and 5,000 at time two, etc. And one of the things we can then do is to say if Joe can compound continuously at 5.7% for 20 years, how much money does he have at the end of that time period? All right. The other way to do it, it would be to call this an annuity due uh, because the payments are made at the beginning of the year and to say that there are going to be 20 payments, otherwise it's the same and fortunately we get the same result. Okay. Um, if you were paying at the end of the year, by the way, instead of the beginning, then you actually have about 10,600 and some dollars less at the time that you're going to retire. So this, um, okay. For all the TV viewers at home, there's a little distraction going on outside. Um, okay, so that's the first part. Question six is, I sort of needed to give you an answer. So we approximate $192,000. And now we want to know, assuming Joe spends $2,500 per month at the end of every month, and he wants to be conservative because he wants to make sure he has enough money and spends 4% you know, on his money, how long is Joe's money going to last before he's left to Social Security and the rest? Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to say, look, this is really an annuity. He's getting $2,500. He's getting it for a wide period of time. And we're going to use the three argument form of annuity, which is discussed in the documentation for annuity. PTQ represents a series of payments occurring at time intervals Q. And our time interval here is 1 12th. The rest of this is pretty standard. We have 4% compounded continuously. And we, um, what we're basically saying is that the time value today of this annuity stream needs to be equal to the amount of money that Joe has, which is, you, if you used 192,000, that's fine. I'm going to use um, 191,926 here. And now all we're doing is solving for y. How many periods does Joe have to have? And so. He's got a, he will only last for 7.4 years, yes. Isn't that making the annuity like the 2,500 payments that you're taking out increase at 4%? Or is that making the 192,000 uh, increase what he at 4%? Yeah. The um, okay, he's investing the money he's not taking out. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, but isn't what, like, because you've got the annuity with the 2,500 and then you've got the effective interest does that not increase the amount that you're taking out by 4% or? No, he wants to take out a flat 2,500 per month. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite getting your question. Just, Try it again. In the same time value, you have. Let me ask you this. Are you asking a conceptual question or are you asking a, about an the interpretation of the an question? interpretation question? of the code. That's no, your, of your that's code. Your answer. Of my code. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Just, so. Because you have the annuity there. This is a constant annuity. If I look mm -hmm. at the, uh, if I look at a cash flow for this, yeah, yeah, I understand. okay. That's how we look at and I'm just saying, why do you have then the interest rate of that in the same time value at four percent? Isn't that increasing the? Isn't that interest increasing the annuity, or is it increasing the? No. If, yeah. it, if, you, if you pretend that Joe's retirement account is the annuity, the annuity okay. is paying twenty five hundred. Joe's retirement account is the source of the annuity mm -hmm. that he's taking out. Yeah. And yes, his, his money is earning 4% per year. That's true. But he's also withdrawing money mm -hmm. every year or every month. Because I'm just 
like in the question right before, you have the time value, the annuity, 5,000, comma, 20, and then you have the interest there. That's yeah. growing the amount you're putting into it. Yes. And so I'm not, because it, it looks pretty much the same as the well, amount that you're taking out. Right, so Joe, Joe pension is a number, and the other one yeah. is a number that's adding up until it equals that number. And the question's solve for when that number equals the other number. And so it's 7.4. Which is about what I think. Give it one more try, Marcus, because I think there's okay. an important conceptual issue here, and I'm not figuring okay, out what it so is. So, from what I'm seeing, is the answer that you have is it looks like it's increasing the amount that you're taking out rather than increasing the amount that's in your bank account. So instead of taking 2,500 out every time, you're taking 2,500 out that's growing at 4%, while this remains a static number. So what happens is that what you're taking out, it, taking out is set, but the amount that yeah. you actually take out is actually less than you, uh, than you had previous. Let's, let's try it this way. Let's try this. Let's do a fold list. Um, or maybe a nest. Uh, well, let's see. All right, so here, how much money does Joe have in his bank account each month? Okay, so if we start with um, X... What does he have the next period? The next period he has 1.404x, because he's earning interest, minus 2,500. Mm -hmm. Okay? And now, um, actually it's 1.04, uh, it's actually not, because we've got to be careful with the yeah. months here. Yeah. Um, and it's compounded continuously. Yes. So let's just get this technically right here. Technically, the interest rate he's making is that. Mm -hmm. So let's do this, one plus that per month. Times X minus 2,500. That's, yeah. you follow that part. Mm -hmm. All right, let's now um, nest list this and we'll start them off with Joe pension amount and we'll let this run, just to be simple for right now, we'll let it run for a year, 12 periods. And so what you can see is, even though he's taking $2,500 out, his bank account is not diminishing by $2,500 because he was earning interest on it. And so the question would be, how long do I have to run this for before he runs out of money? So let's run it for 88 periods. And we can see we're just about to run out. If I run it for 89 periods, so, he's out. Mm -hmm. Does that remotely help? Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. But it's just, it's just the code looks weird to me, I guess. So. Um, it always looks weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> makes complete sense to me. This, we're, we're equilibrating the value of the money that he's going to get mm -hmm with the amount of money that's sitting, the time value of the amount of money that's sitting in his bank account. Mm -hmm. No, I understand it conceptually, it's just, okay. still, just the yeah, the, data. Like, I was like disconnected from the actual like yeah. Yeah, yeah. math, so. I guess I, I had two different ways. The, uh -huh. the annuity command yes. allows you to put in an initial payment also. Yes, it does. And, and so, you could do it a different. I had I had done it a different way with the find root, where I said that the yeah. the payments were negative twenty five hundred, and the initial payment was one ninety two, and then yes. and then I found the value in that the said it equal to zero. So, so I had X. So I had X as the payment in the annuity and X as the future. Okay, date. let's see your code. Let's see if that. All right, let's do a find root. And now what um, you want to do an annuity. Of you're gonna have money paid out, yep, yes. So minus twenty five hundred comma. And ha I've forgotten. Honestly, I've never used this uh, specify an initial payment thing. But it's uh, it's in there. I know it's in there. Yeah, it's in with the uh, P initial P final and then TQ. All right, so let's wrap this up. Mm -hmm. That's the regular amount, and so you've got Joe pension as the initial amount. 